Hi, so this is a uh, kind of after the fact. When I was recording yesterday, my um, babysitter came a little earlier than I expected, and so I didn't get to really finish up. So I'm coming back and throwing this at the beginning. Um, hi, welcome to episode whatever it is of the We Are Yarn podcast. Um, I just wanted to pop in real quick and um, tell you guys I figured out <laughs> why I wasn't... Um, searchable on YouTube and I have fixed that. You can search me now. You can find my podcasts very easily. So if you prefer YouTube and you haven't been able to hunt me down that way, um, please just go type in We Are Yarn, three words, into the search bar at YouTube and you can find me. My little episodes come right up. You can subscribe and it would be awesome. Um, also, if you enjoy the episode, please throw me a thumbs up. I know um, I watch most of my podcasts on my iPad with the YouTube app, and um, I'm really bad about giving thumbs up to episodes, um, but I'm going to try to be better because I know that um, helps. So, yeah, that's it. And I'm, I had to move venue because my husband's home. It's a Saturday. My husband's home now, and it's weird recording in front of other people and so I'm back here in my craft room um, and what you see behind me is my new fun it's not new this desk is um, my dad actually called me and said he was spending most of my inheritance on this desk and that it was going to be mine when he died <laughs> but it's called a Wooten desk w-o-o-t-e-n if you enjoy history and um, antique things, you should go look up a Wooten desk. They are very cool, and I love it. And I have now finally stuffed a lot of my yarn into it. It makes me happy. Um, anyway, I digress. Let's get on to our regularly scheduled program. I'm going down to the drugstore Buy a big old skinny yarn I'm gonna knit me a kitten Even if you don't give a darn Good morning. Welcome to episode 136 of the We Are Yarn podcast. My name is Amanda. I'm your host. I am Mandy Cat, M-A-N-D-I-K-A-T on Ravelry. Mm, the same name with 509 after it on Instagram. Those are my social media of choice these days. We have a Ravelry group for We Are Yarn. Um, I think it's called the We Are Yarn Podcast. We Are Yarn Podcast. No the in front of it. Um, it's been pretty quiet, but um, that makes me a little sad. Maybe we can get a little more action there. I don't know. How are you? I'm doing pretty okay. Let me move my coffee, my mug cozies over here a little bit closer. Mug rugs. Um... I wanted to jump in and say hi. I know I said couple three weeks last time, but um, I actually managed to go to the store, like I said, and get my polyfill that has a cute pattern for a um, an owl on the back of it. Look how cute. Cut out some fabric, make an owl. Anyway, <laughs> so I managed to go get my polyfill and um, and I told you I'd done that last week and not finish stuffing my baby boy Isaac's dinosaur. I finally got around to doing that. I was going back to get my um, things that I talked about last week that, um, sorry, that I um, didn't have with me to show you. So I thought I'd show those to you, talk about my where I made it in my sweater. But then that dinosaur was next to the crochet project I started um, a couple, three weeks ago. And I was like, I could, all I have to do is stuff it and sew the legs on and maybe put some eyes on it and I'm done. So while I studied a little bit, um, watching some uh, videos to study, I did that. So here he is. This is the plesiosaur. Um, I'm pretty excited to have him done. And, but guys, so 
Um, he was knit all in pieces, so you see like the top part, the bottom part, and the fins, top and bottom, fins, top and bottom. So you end up making eight of these, or four of these, four of these, two of each color, his, the top part of his body, the bottom part of his body, and then you sew it all together. And sewing it together was not fun for me. That's not my jam. I don't enjoy that. But he's finished. There he is. Um, and let me show you. This is the book. I'm going to do a quick review of the book now that I've actually... I don't really like doing reviews of books until I've knitted something out of it. Does that make sense? Because I feel like I can show it to you. I can show you what's in the book. But I don't know really how good the book is. So this is Knitted Dinosaurs by Tina Barrett, 15 Prehistoric Pals to Knit from Scratch. I bought this at Tuesday morning. It looks like it usually would retail in the U.S. for $16.95, Canada $18.95. I paid a whopping $5 for it. So. 15 dinosaurs, and let me flip through and show them to you. The first one is a Diplodocus. Diplodocus. And there his full body is. And then you have your Triceratops. Whoa. That may be the next one I make, even though there's, um, they all, most of them have these little felt things on them, like little felt additions. Ankylosaurus, a Stegosaurus is super cute, uh, this guy is a Parasaurolophus, this, yeah, of course Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, you have an Allosaurus. Of a Lossoraptor that utilizes some fun fur there. We have some Troodonts, little guys, a Spinosaurus. They're all really precious. There's the Plesiosaur. We're in the swimming ones now with the Plesiosaur, the um, Ichthyosaurus. Your uh, Mesosaurus. You can't forget your Pterodactyl. He's so cute. And then the Quetzalcoatlus. I don't know. I've never heard of that one. But he flies too, it seems. So, that's what you have in there. So, let me switch, flip to... Since the one that I have, they all have lots of pictures in here. Um, they give you a little bit of information, like it says the plesiosaur. There's our little guy. Plesiosaur were large marine reptiles. Tells you how big it was. Poor four paddle like flippers. Sharp teeth and strong jaws. Short pointed tails. And they lived in the ocean and ate fish and other marine animals. So you learn interesting things about the dinosaurs while you're knitting them. Um, so this little guy, the first page tells you the information you need. And then you have one page of direction and then one page of, um, it says making up. So finishing, you know. Um, so this one, it wanted me to sew sequins randomly. Well, okay, first off, it just says position paddles to side of body and sew firmly in place. Um, so I just kind of made it up as I went. It wanted me to sew sequins on it, but this being for my 13, almost 14 month old, I did not do the sequins. <clears throat> it wanted me to cut two teardrop drop shapes of felt and put little buttons, again, infant, so no buttons. Uh, felt not available in the house so I just duplicate stitched some little blue eyes on there and that's good works for me um, 
I do in hindsight maybe if I'd gotten a shiny yarn um, and held along on the back maybe you know floated it along and then knitted it along with the green um, every so often on the back that way I'd have some of that shiny on the back but um, I'm good I'm good without it I got a little bit confused on some of the directions occasionally and I consider myself a pretty I'm getting on too advanced so I think if you're a really adventurous beginner or intermediate you should be able to handle it um, adventurous beginner with some um, with some help from the internet it does in the back have um, techniques so talks about tools and materials and gauge um, she says in the case of your dinosaur although I do state a gauge it's not a disaster if it varies um, it'll just affect the size of your dinosaur you just want to make sure that you have very dense gauge because they're stuffies you don't want the stuffing to show through um, but then she teaches you how to cast on and do a knit stitch and a purl stitch um, and then real and binding off and sewing how to sew up she talks about French knots a back stitch but she doesn't talk about like there were knit front KFB there was no how to do a knit front back back there in the back um, let's see so there is an abbreviation list but why would you teach someone the knit and purl stitch and I don't know I, just, I always wonder why they include things like that but what I have learned about myself in knitting this dinosaur is that if I'm gonna make stuffies I would much rather crochet them um, that's just me uh, but I do still I think these are cute enough that I will probably still work through the book. Um, it may take me 15 years to do it because I don't know if I can do more than one of these in a year. So there he is. Finished. And that makes me really excited. All right. And so then I also wanted to show you the X stitch shrug that I started that I talked about and then didn't have with me. So this is the X Stitch Shrug by um, Deanna Young, the Yarn Yogi. This was published in 2012, and I think I've had it on my list of things to make pretty much since then. I print out things tiny, so that's a tiny little picture, but I hope it's good. So that's what it would look like. And I have gotten two repeats done. There it is. There it is. I guess it's a little over a yard. 36, 40 inches maybe. And the yarn I'm using, <laughs> it's a, um, it's a Tuesday morning kind of day. I saved this yarn from Tuesday morning quite a while back. It's um, KF, what is this? Knitting Fever Luxury Roving Code Color 1. This is what it looks like. For some reason in my brain, when I stashed it away, I, my brain kept it as being a really dark black with more bronzy in it. It's not at all. It's kind of a bluish gray with reddish browns in it but it's very neutral and it's going to be I think very lovely to wear I'm hooking this up on a size I on an I hook and this is a Susan Bates with the bamboo handle I love the bamboo handle ones so that's that that's what I cast on to satiate the crochet bug one day because it bit me hard. Hard, hard. Alright. 
So, let's talk about my sweater. I have been zoom zooming through my sweater. So, you know, I talked about how my row gauge was very off. And so, then when I checked it out, my stitch gauge was also very off. So, I uh, cast on fewer slit stitches at the underarm. And I just kept on going per the pattern um, for the size that, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kept on going per the pattern for the size that correlated to how many stitches I now had on my needle. And I've been doing my increases. I forgot a couple of increases on the back. I've been doing the increases on the front great, but once I got on the other side of that marker for some reason, I forgot to do them occasionally. So I threw in a couple extra on this last increase row. <laughs> but um, this is how it looks so far, and I'm really, really pleased. Really pleased. So, um, you know that row gauge. Magic gauge. It's, um, it has affected the sweater on a whole because I'm now I was supposed to for the size I was originally going to make you were to um, increase a total of nine times to 24 and a half inch and then knit just in pattern until you hit 24 and a half inches and I have increased uh, not nine times I think seven times six or seven times and I am already at 24 inches <clears throat> so the plan my lovelies is to put my stitches on um, like put another cable needle up in there uh, to make the diameter big enough to fit around me and try it on and see if I like the length as it is I still have to add uh, some amount of ribbing on the bottom I haven't honestly read the pattern that far but, um, you know, it was supposed to be kind of zero negative ease around the bust to make it a little flattering. And then an A line. My A is not going to be quite, my line is not going to be quite as A as um, the designer intended. And that's okay with me. Um, provided that it looks alright. Which I think it will. I think it'll be fine. And um, the longer I knit... And this is true with cooking too. The longer I knit, the longer I cook, the more I realize not an exact science. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be exactly the way the pattern says to still be lovely. You still get the gist though. So something else that I've been thinking about with this lovely sweater is the sleeves. They're next. It is today is November the 18th. Um, it is National Knit a Sweater Month, and I wanted to knit a sweater in the month. So, one thing that I have been considering so that I can finish my sweater, I'm not keeping up with my stitch count. I'm not trying to hit that 50,000 mark. I'm just trying to finish the sweater because that would be, that is a challenge for me in itself. <laughs> um, you know, full time job studying for extra credentials, raising a toddler. Finishing a sweater in a month is going to be amazing. Um, but, so let me show you. Have I told you what even pattern this is this time around? I don't think I have. This is the Palladio by Jane Richmond. There it is. So you see it's supposed to have these, you know, kind of longish, looking sleeves that are just kind of stockinette stitch. So, that's lovely. It's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. It's one of the reasons that I wanted to make the sweater. However, and this is hand spun. This is Shetland. Shetland um, is kind of, a, what am I trying to say? Larger micron. Um, than say a merino which is a very fine micron very small fiber right and so it's um, very soft 
Shetland is a little um, larger micron. It's a little not as soft, not as soft as Merino. Um, I think if I give it a soak with some hair conditioner, it may soften up quite a bit. It may feel much softer, but it is not a next to skin sweater so much, this sweater. Um, if I had been knitting this out of you know, a commercial merino. If I had spun a merino to make a sweater, this would be lovely. Okay, also, this is going to be very, very warm. A very warm sweater. And I live in East Tennessee, and in these parts, it's not terribly, terribly cold for terribly, terribly long. Um, and I'm considering instead of making long sleeves, um, making it a short sleeve sweater, and then just in the winter months wearing a long sleeved t-shirt type shirt under it, um, just to extend the amount of time that I'll be able to wear it. Um, that may not happen though. I may end up knitting the sleeves because those sleeves really do look fabulous. I don't know, and then just getting maybe one of those burnout tees. That's a long sleeve burnout, kind of tight fitting layering number and wearing under it so that the burnout, so that it's not real thick. It's thinner than t-shirt material so that I don't get as hot in it, but I still don't have to deal with the itchy. I don't know, we'll see. But while I'm sitting here, with it up against me looking at it. It is, I think we're just about to where we need to be for me. Um, we'll see. So that's that. I'm so excited. Sitting here looking at it in the viewfinder, guys. I'm so excited. Yay! I'm finally, the, the story of this, if this is the first time you're joining me, welcome by the way. Um, if this is, <laughs> uh, um, I started spinning this for um, a spin along, knit along in 2012. And it's still not a sweater yet. It's almost there and I'm so excited about it. And honestly as well, guys, let me say, I, um, I'm not one to knit patterns more than once, but it seems like I'm starting to get on a garment kick. I wanna knit garments. Um, I have lots and lots and lots of shawls. I have so many shawls. I have more hats than I know what to do with. Um, I would like to knit some more fingerless mitts. I just, I keep making them too small. They end up too small. Um, I think I underestimate how big my hands are. But, um, every time I've tried to knit a garment, something is always just a little off. Like, when I first started the podcast, my um, I did a knit along, or I um, knitted a sweater, just like an open front, you know, one button at the top, swingy cardigan, um, out of some bamboo silk something or other, um, and it grew and grew and grew. Originally, the little button was perfect right here. Now I had to move, I had to move my button way over here to the shoulder and put an extra button underneath it on this side and it crosses, it's huge, huge. And um, and then I did a Lady Kana early on in the podcast. Remember we had a Lady Kana knit along? And um, my sleeves ended up being so tight, so tight. And um, the first garment I made, no, not the first garment, the first sweater I made is fine. But I had a lot, a lot, a lot of help. I wasn't doing it on my own. Um, I made a Cassidy. Uh, it's really heavily cabled. I was so proud of it. I did a gauge swatch. And it turned out short and wide. And the sleeves are crazy long. I, I, don't, I don't know. And um, what else? I'm going to turn that into a pillow eventually because it's really beautiful. I don't want to just... Anyway, um, what else? It just, 
Oh, my babysitter's here. I should probably get going. Um, hey guys. Okay, I'm back one more time. <laughs> mm. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to show you one other thing that I forgot yesterday. Um, I wanted to show you the sock bank, sock blank that I ripped out. Um, so remember, this is River's Edge Fiber Arts. And this is what it looks like after I have it all ripped out and wound up. So it's a gradient from that purple, that deep kind of, is it a royal plummy purple, kind of into a fuchsia sort of reddish into orange and then into kind of an orangey yellow. And I started obviously with the purple, so you know, I may have made it part of the way through the fuchsia before my socks were done. So I've ripped that out now. Um, I wanted to comment on a couple of things that I meant to a uh, viewer commented, I believe on Instagram, about my sleeves because I said, oh, the sleeves are coming soon on that Palladio. And she said that what she and what some of her friends do, I don't know if she said she did it specifically, that they um, will stop, you know, so you work your raglan increases, de um, separate for the sleeves, and do just an inch or two of the body just to get it kind of solid there, and then go back and cast on the sleeves, do the sleeves, and then work the body, which is brilliant. Um, I should have thought of that. But I was so caught up in how is it going to fit I didn't think about doing that and when that was brought up as an option to me it was already way too late just I'm so far down into the body just might as well go ahead and finish it up and do the sleeves what I had really wished I could do is cast on the sleeves from the bottom and knit up and then Kitchener it but um, my concern now with doing that is that um, because the length of the body, how many, how much, how many fewer stitches I'm having to knit to make the length correct, I am nervous about how many, um, how many rows, how many increases I would be off coming up the sleeve, and then it would just, I'm just nervous about doing that. So I guess I'm going to do it the old-fashioned. It's knitting in the round top down old fashioned. I'm just going to do it the way the pattern says and pick up my stitches and knit down and turn the body and just deal with it. Um, I may get creative and like try to roll my body up and somehow secure it so that it's not just flopping all over the place. But I'm afraid then that would create a lot of weight in one spot. Um, and I may try to be conscientious about instead of continuously turning the sweater in a circle maybe just back and forth so that I'm not having to flip the whole sweat I don't know I don't know but um yeah so sorry about that little you know cut in here um I hope you are having a great week and I hope you have a great American Thanksgiving uh be you in America or not you know, if it's just, if it's your holiday or if it's just another Thursday. I hope it's fabulous. And I will see you soonly. <laughs> Bye, guys. I just can't wait to finish. I got the kitten in blues. No, I just can't wait to finish. That's why I got those kitten in blues. Good morning.